Our next speaker, Nafiz Mossadegh Ahmad, is Executive Director of the Institute for Policy Research and Development in London, England. He is the author of the recently published book, The War on Truth, 9-11, Disinformation and the Anatomy of Terrorism, which deconstructs the findings of the 9-11 Commission report and investigates the worldwide web of terrorist networks across space and time. Good morning, Mr. Ahmed. Thank you. Um, the title of my section is A Suspects and Plots, Osama Bin Laden and U.S. Intelligence. Um, so I'm going to try and present a number of important facts and reports that fundamentally challenge the official account of the nature and identities of the alleged 9-11 hijackers. Very briefly, though I won't be able to cover everything at all, um, but their relationship to Al-Qaeda and their activities as Islamist extremists. While I won't offer a, a kind of alternative theoretical explanation, it must be noted that the facts I'm going, to, I'm going to refer to constitute as yet unresolved anomalies that strike at the core of the official narrative espoused by the 9-11 Commission and other previous inquiries. A variety of reports from um, reliable accounts, journalistic investigations, eyewitness testimonials provide a very bizarre picture at odds with the conventional portrayal of the 9-11 hijackers as Islamic fundamentalists. Two key hijackers, for example, Mohammed Atta and Marwan al Shehi are known to have visited the, uh, the Woodland Park Resort Hotel in the Philippines several times between 1998 and 2000. Numerous local residents and hotel workers, according, according to the International Herald Tribune, recognized them from news photographs after the event. Um, they reportedly, it says that the report says, they drank whiskey with Philippine bar girls, they dined at a restaurant that specialized in Middle East, Middle East cuisine, and visited at least one of the local flight schools. Al Shehi himself, through several parties with different Arab friends, um, they, um, they drank alcohol, they, they had lots of big vehicles, they had a lot of money. Um, and there are a number of reports like this. Um, they, they spent time with, with, with the girls, the chambermaids, and so on and so forth. Um, general kind of activity is not commensurate with this kind of strict Puritan Islamic ideology of Al Qaeda. Um, and these, there are many reports of this nature that I'm going to briefly give you, U.S. investigators have, have, have said that the five of the hijackers, including Atal al Shehi, there are others, Nawak al-Hamzi, Ziad Jarrah, and Hani Hanjul, they visited Las Vegas six times between May and August 2001. According to the San Francisco Chronicle, for example, they, quote, engaged in some decidedly un-Islamic sampling of prohibited pleasures in America's reputed capital of more corrosion, unquote. The activities included drinking alcohol, which is strictly prohibited in Islam, gambling, the same, and visiting strip clubs. Um, and I could go on, I don't want to repeat the, the kind of reports that are available, but suffice to say that the number and consistency of the reports is sufficient to conclude that this is true. These guys were basically not acting at all in, 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 in accordance with the kind of traditional requirements of Islam. Just to give you an idea, I have a, a quote from an expert. His name is Mahmoud Mustafa Ayyub. He's a professor of religion at Temple University in Philadelphia, and he specializes in Islamic and Middle East studies. He said, um, that, you know, it's incomprehensible that a person could drink and go to a strip bar one night, then kill themselves the next day in the name of Islam. People who would kill themselves for their faith would come from very strict Islamic ideology. Something doesn't add up here. Um, just to give you a kind of deeper understanding of, of, of what we're talking about, I mean, Al-Qaeda is basically a radical tendency within a broader Islamic movement known as the Salafi movement, which originates today in, in, in Saudi Arabia. It's derived from the Arabic term Salaf, which means to proceed, and refers to the companions of the Prophet Muhammad. And the general idea is that you have to very strictly follow the precise behavior of the Prophet. If you go outside of that boundary, you're basically um, exiled from the religion. You cannot call yourself a real Muslim. So the fact that these people were, were, were behaving in this way is very, very bizarre. Um, <clears throat> And that's, that's one element of the picture that I want to give you. What was their connection to Al-Qaeda? Um, how were they connected to Al-Qaeda if they were behaving in a way which was supposedly completely at odds with, with, with Al-Qaeda traditions? Moving on from there, um, another very interesting phenomenon 
which needs to be acknowledged and which the, the, the Commission report simply doesn't look at in any detail at all, is how the Al these, these Al Qaeda operatives were able to go in and out of the United States um, without any kind of sanction at all from, from the immigration services. There was a very interesting report um, by Joel Mowbray from, from, from the Conservative National Review. Um, and what he argued, and he, he interviewed a number of um, State Department officials who worked in the cons in, 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 he, he worked with, with, with visas and in, in, the cons in consular affairs. And what he concluded was that expert analysis of these visas, um, the visa application forms of 15 of the 9-11 terrorists, show that all of them among the 15 reviewed should have been denied visas under then existing law. It wasn't that the law was, was, was a problem and that we need to tighten the borders. It was that the law simply wasn't applied. Six separate experts were interviewed by, by Malbury. They analyzed the simple two-page form and they came to the same conclusion. All of the visas, visa applications they reviewed should have been denied on their face. Um, and he catalogues some of the glaring um, problems with the, with, the, with, the, with, with the visas and he says even an untrained eye would be able to look at this and say this is, this is impossible to allow these people into the country.